Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. To everyone who has made their way out on this morning, we ask God to do something special for you on today. We thank you for those of you who have joined us by stream. We're going to have a little fun today. Come on. All right. I think that it is important that, that we have fun. So, without further ado, I'm just going to trust whatever word you say. You, you didn't what? I saw your lips moving, but I heard no words. You saw my lips moving, but you heard no words. Heard no words. But was I speaking? We don't no. Know. How do you not know? Because we didn't hear Because we didn't, you didn't hear anything. So is there yeah. something wrong with your hearing? No. No, we good. You hear good? We hear you now. You hear me now? Why do you hear me now? Because you're speaking. Because I'm speaking out. You're vocal. Mm -hmm. well, I'm vocal. Yeah. Yes. You're audible. Yeah, that's the word. No, we can hear you now. I read your lips. Oh, so he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Does right. the Spirit always yell? No. no. Does the Spirit always talk loud? No. So how do you hear the Spirit? You listen. Mm. It has a way of getting your attention. It's a way of getting your attention. The Spirit has a way of getting your attention. On what the Word of God is trying to tell you. You don't have to yell. Once you don't have to yell. I'm going to show you got your attention. We're going to have. Yes, sir. We're going to have some fun today. I'm going to show you about Jesus' ministry and how Jesus was a deliverer. Mm -hmm. He was a healer. Mm -hmm. Jesus practiced a deliverance ministry and a healing ministry and a teaching ministry. People don't want to deliver. They don't want to heal. They don't want to do nothing except for get rich. Mm -hmm. They want to walk around with cancer but have a fat pocketbook. Mm -hmm. Those that don't know that. Trust God first. You're going to gain the whole world and lose yourself. What profit did a man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to gain the whole world. The whole world. And lose his soul. And lose his soul. Jesus. Folks, we got to do better. God has given us ample time and chances to get our acts together. Why are we still walking around with our act not together. As we live this life and as we see how we have grown up into what we are, we've seen the good, we've seen the bad, yes. we've seen the ugly, yes. and we've seen the in-between. Yes. But with that being said, God throughout his whole world has been beckoning for his people well, to hear him. Yes. He bad. that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. Really? To listen means to take heed. Mm -hmm. I want you to put some action to what I, there has to be some activity. Okay, so now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. If God is speaking, Come on, what's happening? We should be listening. What's that? There's some activity going on. Some Something is going on that he's trying to get us to understand. Because when he's speaking, he's being active. Mm -hmm. Your problem is, is when he's not speaking. Mm -hmm. And he's not being active. But you still are. Yeah. Oh, my. Come on. We're still being active, but we're not hearing him speak. Mm -hmm. well. The distractions of life oftentimes keeps us We think he's going to speak a certain kind of way. We think he's going to speak in the audible fashion. Come on now. We think that he's going to thunder from heaven. We don't think that he's going to speak. Still soft voice. Mm -hmm. A 
That's right. Because life's activity doesn't require that we focus, only that we give it our attention. Well, wow, wow. <laughs> Say it again, wow. Life's activity doesn't demand that we focus, only that we give it our activity. Mm -hmm. See, when we focus, that means we are interested. Come on, come on. We are paying attention because we know that something is bound to be said that we need to hear. Mm -hmm. He that have an ear. Wherever you are, everybody touch your ear. If you got one mm -hmm. and you have the ability to hear, why don't you? Because every time he speaks to you in your audible ear, it doesn't touch your spirit. Sometimes we let it go in one ear. And out the other. Sometimes we refuse to hear the authority when it's coming forward. Hey, well, did you hear me? Come back here. Don't you walk away from me. I know he didn't just walk away from me. I know he heard me. I know she heard me. We make a conscious choice to walk away from the voice of authority when it's trying to correct us, mm -hmm. chastise us, right. rebuke us, or in some instances, just tell us something that we need. To him, mm -hmm. he that hath an ear, let him hear this. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Watch this. When we grow in our relationship with him, we have to understand that everything that God does is for relationship. Yes. A lot of people don't have a real relationship. Well, yes. They don't understand what relationship is. They have a one-sided relationship. You know, without a real relationship, one will never have a real conversation with the individual on the other end. They'll be talking at them, won't be talking to them. How many times have you said that when somebody's speaking to you? Why are you always talking at me? Why are you never talking to me? Something's wrong in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Relationship sets the tone to listening. If you have a relationship with God, aren't you going to pay attention to his servant when he speaks? That's right. You're supposed to. Yeah. You're supposed to. Well, I'm going to tell you like this right here. Sleep on. Sleep on. If you, When the Lord says that he's going to come back like a thief in the night, he says also in his word that when he comes back, whatever you find yourself doing, keep on doing it. That's right. Might as well. Keep on doing it. Might as well. Because it's a little bit too late then. Yeah. Did you hear that? Come on. He didn't have to hear, hear this. Did you hear that? Watch this. Watch this. If you're sinning, keep on sinning. If you're lying, keep on lying. Let me talk to you a little bit about lies. A liar will always be a liar till they stop lying. <laughs> a thief will always be a thief. Until they stop thieving and stealing. That's right. A sinner will always be a sinner until they stop sinning. Did you hear that? Right. He that hath an ear, let him hear this. Zechariah 1 and 4 says like this. Be not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor did they hearken unto me, saith the Lord. The Lord said they cried to him. They was groveling. They were snotty nosed. They was teary eyed. They was, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Lord, you know it. <laughs> and he said, they didn't listen to him. They didn't hear him. Because they were thinking that he was going to speak to them one way. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to speak to them in another way. Well. They thought that he was not listening because he didn't immediately respond. How many times have you prayed and God immediately responded? Huh? There is sometimes a waiting period for the sometimes, response. Sometimes, that's right. Does not mean sometimes. he did not hear you. He gave an example in the Bible. He said, listen, the prayer came up before the Lord. I, listen, I heard the prayer when it was released. And immediately, 
I dispatched my angels to bring you the answer. But they were held up. They were distracted. Something stopped the word from reaching you. But I had already, I heard you. Yeah. I heard you. And I immediately dispatched the word. But there was some kind of interference. Mm -hmm. The word couldn't get through to you because of some type of interference. You say that. The word couldn't get to you because of some type of distraction. Well. The word couldn't get to you, but it wasn't because I did not release my word and send my word to you. He said, I heard you immediately. Because people who are so set in their ways, looking to be important to somebody, looking to show the world that they've changed, well. looking to show the world that they have arrived, oftentimes forget to see the prideful way that they got where they are. Daniel reminds us of it this way, 5, 20, and 21. I want you to get this, somebody. In the street, individuals walk up to you in some places, and they say, what's up, cuz? Yeah. What's up, cuz? How you doing, cuz? Well, I'm going to show you in the Bible. I'm going to show you cuz in the Bible. I'm going to show you cuz in the Bible. Daniel 5, 20, 21. But when Nebuchadnezzar, cuz, when Nebuchadnezzar, cuz, Nebuchadnezzar was, what's up, cuz? Because you didn't want to walk up to John Lee Chambers every time you saw John Lee Chambers and you say, hey, John Lee Chambers, how you doing? So you got a relationship with John Lee Chambers. John Lee Chambers said, why don't you just call me John? But his name is John Lee Chambers. Junior. Junior. Let's don't forget the junior. <laughs> we don't want to rob him of his junior. Please don't. Watch this. In order for him to be a junior, there had to be a senior. There right. had to be a, a real big job. Now John is big John Junior. But what about big John Senior? Yeah, that's right. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. So Nebuchadnezzar's name was Nebuchadnezzar. So when individuals would come up to Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sure if they had a relationship with him, they could come up to him and they could say, what's up, cuz? <laughs> <laughs> you know why they could say, what's up, cuz? That's all right. Because right. they had a relationship with him. Right, right. Watch this. Now watch what Daniel says about cuz. All right. But when Nebuchadnezzar's heart became arrogant. Oh, come on now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And hardened with pride. Mm -hmm. He was disposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. Well, well. When your heart becomes arrogant mm -hmm. and filled with pride, mm -hmm. you will be stripped from your earthly position. Well, mm -hmm. Whether it be in ministry or in relationship. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. I'm going to show you a tie-in. Watch this. He was driven away from the people and given the mind of an animal. Mm. Mm. Well, he was well. driven away from the people and something was clearly obvious. There was something not quite right in his brain housing group. His elevator quit going all the way to the fifth floor. You better say that. His elevator quit going all the way to the fifth floor. He couldn't count the one, two, three, four, five no more. Something was going on in his mind. He had the mind of an animal. Watch this, watch this. He lived with the wild donkeys. He lived amongst the asses. <laughs> he lived amongst the asses. How many of you are living amongst the asses? The donkeys, the feral cats, the stray dogs. Watch this, watch this. And he ate grass like cattle. He was on his head and knees out in the field somewhere chewing the cud. His cuds used to be the king, dressed in royal robes, had all of the money in the world, all the power and the prestige in the world. Something happened to his mind because of arrogance and pride because he could not hear what the Lord was saying to him. Did you hear that? Watch this. And his body 
was drenched with the dew of heaven. He was wet. He was stanky. He was nasty. He was eating grass. Something was going on with his mind. His mind had lost him. His hair began to grow. His fingernails began to grow. And the only way that you can tell that he was a man is every now and then he'd stand up. Watch this, watch this. Until he acknowledged that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and sets over them anyone that he wishes. Did you hear that? He was there until the Lord decided that he had had enough. Well, the Lord allowed him to lose his mind, eat grass out in the field like an animal, because of the pride and arrogance of his heart. Because he didn't acknowledge God. He didn't listen to God. He didn't consult God. When God was talking to him, he didn't listen. He walked away. And God was saying, now, wait a minute. I know you hear me. I know you hear me. Come back here. Wait a minute. I knew he didn't just walk away from me. That's how we did it. That's a consequence. For walking away from God when he's trying to talk to you. That's right. There's a consequence sure for, for not listening to God. That's right. Listen, God uses mamas and daddies. Stop hanging around with them idiots. Stop hanging around with them fools. They're not going to mean you no business. Nothing but bad business is going to happen. they no good for you. You need to quit hanging around with them. God's speaking to them. You don't hear them. They're your best friend. They're your, oh, oh, they your bestie. They're your bestie. Your bestie got you on secret scouting missions, going out running behind enemy lines simply because they're your bestie. But God has spoken through your mother, through your pastor, through your daddy. Sometimes he even allowed that crazy uncle of yours to tell you the truth. <laughs> boy, if I was you, I'd leave them. Boy, you know they ain't nothing but a bunch of dope boys. Mm -hmm. You know them ain't nothing but a bunch of club girls. If I was you, Nietzsche, I'd say at the club, I'd leave them girls alone. It's going to be trouble. It's going to be trouble. But no. Some folks, because they refuse to hear God and acknowledge God, are in the condition that they're in until they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> until they do. Amen. Sinners remain in the condition of sin until they acknowledge that God is able to take care of their sin. Thieves remain in the condition that they're in until they realize that they don't have to steal no more. Liars will continue to lie. And liars will continue to lie up until the end. Liars got their own special place in judgment. Well, they got a whole lake of fire <laughs> reserved for them. There's going to be a party going on in the hot water in here. All of the liars going to be bathing in the lake of fire. Simply because they did not acknowledge what God had told them because they didn't hear it. Watch this. People really don't want to hear what you got to say. Christians really don't want to hear what you got to say. Watch this. If you are so accustomed to people telling you what you want to hear, it's hard for you to receive what you need to hear. Because you like for people to tell you what you want to hear. God is not in the business of telling you what you want to hear. All the time, God is very balanced and he'll tell you what you need to hear all the time. Come on now, watch this. Folks who are for real and know who they are, they know they're a liar. They know they're a thief. They know they're a whole monk. They know their heart ain't right. They'll stand up in front of you and tell you, who are you to tell me? I hear from God just like you do. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a problem with you hearing from God. What I got a problem with is what God are you hearing from? Huh? Because just because you say God don't mean we talking about the same God. Your, 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 your Lord, your God might be another God other than mine. So, I mean, I, you got staunch. You know they reek for smelling breath when they walk up on you. They alcohol smelling breath. They don't get into an argument with you and
ain't telling you what the Bible said. Yes, they <laughs> And I'm like, well, what interpretation are you getting that from? Is it that alcohol, the uh, 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 alcohol talking? <laughs> huh? Because the word of God says it's like a serpent. Well, <laughs> it bites like a serpent. You know, you don't never know what's gonna come out of that forked tongue when somebody is under the influence of them spirits. Listen to this. Listen to this. Man has already told you the spirits in a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> and you got it <laughs> like a baby. Mm -hmm. Spirit, they, call, they call alcohol in the bottle spirits. Mm -hmm. Why do they call alcohol in the bottle spirits? Because mm -hmm. it'll do something to your spirit. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll cause you to act out of character. Or it will reveal your true character. Well, well. Yes. Come on. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. When God releases his word, he doesn't just release his word just to sit on the shelf and collect dust. He releases his word to go out and accomplish what he has sent for his word to do in your life based on what you're asking for him. See, people go to God and they start asking God for things and they start praying for things. And the Lord is checking your heart meter to see if it registers with any hatred, any pride, any unforgiveness. Because he's already given you opportunity to address those things. Now, you have specific things before God that you want for him. And you keep wondering why you don't have these things. Well, you ain't took care of your obligations and responsibilities with your pride yet. You still got unforgiveness in your heart. Okay. He's already blessed you with life, health, strength, breath, ability to see. And the reason that y'all can hear me is because you're paying attention. You're interested in something that I have to say. But when individuals are not interested in something that you got to say, they will out yell you. They will loud talk you and then tell you, you ain't got to get loud with me. Why are you yelling? I can hear you just fine. Can you? Did you hear that? Can you hear just fine? The Lord wants to know, can you hear that? Watch this, watch this, watch this. People will stand up in front of you and they will tell you, I hear the Lord just like you. I have a relationship with the Lord just like you. How we all have the capacity to hear the Lord. And we all have the capacity to have a relationship with him. What Lord though? What Lord? Well, well. What Lord? What Lord are you talking about? You talking about another Lord than I'm talking about? We already got a problem because the word of God says let us come together. Mm -hmm. Let us reason. Mm -hmm. And the reason he wants us to come together and reason is because some of y'all have lost your mind. Come on now. What about cuz? Yes, what about cuz? Y'all y'all forget about cuz that's bad? Cuz that lost his mind? Yeah. I know that there are individuals in the body of Christ that there's something wrong with their mind. Yes. Well, yes. Depression is a mind thing. Yes, yes. And if you are suffering from depression and you're taking medication, something wrong with your mind. What? Did I say something wrong? So for all of the people who are dealing with and battling depression for whatever reasons, there's a chemical imbalance. Take your medicine so that your mind can be imbalanced. Cuz didn't have no chemical imbalance. Cuz had a heart problem. Cuz had a pride problem. Cuz was, cuz was arrogant. Some of your conditions got a mind. It's based on your arrogance and your pride. Not because you got an imbalance of chemicals. You got an imbalance of understanding of your spirit. And God is not able to get to you with the information that you need because all of the distractions in the world have your attention. You want them to speak one way. You want them to say it like this. You want them to preach it like this. You want her to preach it like that. Well, what about what God wants? I thought this thing that we are involved in is about what God wants. Yeah, yeah. Allowing God to have free course and free reign to do what he needs to do to bring back those from the brink of hell. Come on now. To snatch them yeah. back from the pit. Yes. A 
lot of folks chewing grass this morning. Yeah. A lot of folks is out in the field with the animals this morning, literally and spiritually. Mm -hmm. Watch this. God says, I want you to think about this church. I want you to think about this. Throughout the Bible, God is begging for us to listen. have no power. Or they have some power. But it's less than the power that they should have. Power less. Either they have no power being powerless or they have power but it's less than the power that they need to activate what they need to get their relief. Watch this. Powerless people are always the people who try to walk in authority. <laughs> Powerless people always try to operate with authority, but they don't recognize that they don't have the authority to access the authority that they claim they have. <laughs> because they're powerless. They're powerless in their understanding. They're powerless in their activation. I listen. So I decided I was going to do something a little different today. I put a suit on. I'm uncomfortable. I'm sweating like a chicken around uh, uh, around fried hot grease right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all, I waited for y'all to read that. I'm sweating like a chicken around hot grease. Somebody will get it in a minute. <laughs> I'm upset. I'm anguished. I'm, I'm in my feelings. But I look good. Come on out. But I look good. Come on out. That's all that matters. To some people, yeah. is they out with appearance. Yeah. They can't hear God say, I ain't interested in what you got on. Amen. I ain't interested in whether you got a suit on or not. Amen. I ain't interested in what you got on. But everybody sitting in church, you got to have the air conditioner on in the fall because most people will fall out because they're so hot. Y'all see this water dripping off of me? It ain't because I just got out of the shower. It's because I got this suit on and it's hot. We have to be wise and use wisdom and not worry about looking good and just worry about getting what the Lord wants for us to get, however we look. Amen? People with no authority walking around trying to gain access to authority and don't even have the authority to gain access to the authority that they claim that they got. People with no authority reveal themselves. Pray for me. Pray for me. It's done. Pray for me. I got a question for you. I'll pray with you. Why can't you pray for me? I don't know what your problems are. I don't know what your needs are. And the only way that I do know is that the Spirit of the Lord reveals it to me. Mm -hmm. And then if he doesn't say address it, I can't address it. He's just giving it to me as a knowing of what I need to begin to intercede on for your behalf. And my intercession is going to be, Lord, Lord, do it. Lord, fix it. Lord, let your perfect will be done concerning those things that are in their life that they have presented before you. That's all I can come in and bring with. You're talking about pray for me, pray for my husband. I don't know the condition of your husband. <laughs> Hold on. Maybe you are the condition that your husband is in. Maybe he's in the condition that he is because he's listening to you and not listening to God. Maybe you in the condition that you're in is because you're listening to your husband and you're not listening to God. We want to listen to everybody and hear everybody but God. But then we're smart. We know we can blame. I can blame. I can blame Bishop when something don't go right in my life. But I best to bet not be trying to blame God. You know, fools will stand up and say, look what God did. God killed my mom. God killed my dad. God killed my baby. Did he? Did he? No. But because of your distorted perception, if you had been listening to God from the beginning, Come on now. you would have a relationship with him and an understanding and knowing that he makes no mistakes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. When your time is up, 
Your time is up. That's right. Listen, That's right. modern medicine can bring you back to life, but they can't make you come alive. Amen. That's right. Amen. They can keep your heart beating, your lungs going, the blood circulating in your body, and your brain be dead, 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 dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they have you in there racking up them thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars all while you praying for a miracle. You selfish individual. When it's time, it's time. That's it. That's right. Tell them, unplug him. Unplug him. You going every day to the hospital. Can't go to work now because you're going to the hospital sitting, watching somebody that's dead. And you don't hear me. Did you hear that? Let them go. When it's time to go, it's time to go. But modern medicine will let you lay there for months. Months. Now, you got to go visit them. Now it becomes burdensome. Now it's a chore. Now you're frustrated. I oh, got to go over here to the hospital to see mom. Got to go over here to the hospital to see dad. Got to go over here to the hospital to see son. No, you don't. This could have been over with. If God was going to resurrect them and raise them off of their bed of affliction, he'd have done it by now. I'm not, listen, that's your issue with you and God. This is what I'm saying. Sometimes because we don't hear God, we make selfish choices. That's right. yeah. And we do selfish things. Yes. Mama told you the whole time she was living, if I ever get really, really sick, do not resuscitate me. Amen. Let me go. Selfish children say, there's so much more I need to say to mama. There's so much more I need to say to daddy. And the doctor said, well, we can sustain them for a little while. We can put them on the life support system for a little while. But they can't hear you. They, not only can they not hear you, they ain't even there. Amen. They got that dead body alive. So now one dead man talking to another. Uh -huh. Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, they mad at me now. Oh, he revealing now. He that hath an ear, hear this. Demons know your condition. They know what condition you're in. They know whether you're strong, whether you're powerful, whether you're weak, whether you're sincere. What's you talking about? I'm going to show y'all something. I told you we're going to have some fun. Watch this. James 2 and 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Let me see a show of hands that believers that there is one God. Well, okay. There's more than one. But when you raise your hands and believe that there is one God, you are saying that I know that there is one God above all other gods. Right. Huh? Watch this. You do well to believe that. But the devils also believe. <laughs> and they tremble. The devils believe that there is one God. So you believing in God is that impressive to a devil. <laughs> Unless it's the God that they are afraid of. Mm -hmm. See, because they are afraid of their God. Yeah. They are afraid of our God. Yeah. Huh? All right. So God don't mean nothing to a devil. Because they got a God. Yes, they but they God ain't our God. They are afraid. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Is that is that Jesus? Is that Jesus of Nazareth? Why have you come before I die? Why have you come for us before I die? Mm -hmm. They understand and they know that they got a time to go. That's right. If the devils know that they got a time to go, why come believers don't know that they got a time to go? Come on. Who are you listening to? Trying to help somebody. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Help us now. Watch this, watch this. Luke 4, 31 through 37 says, Then Jesus and his companions went to Capernaum. And right away, Jesus entered the synagogue. Jesus went into the temple. Jesus went into where they was having services at. Jesus went into the edifice. Jesus went into the great big congregation of people that had gathered themselves together to listen to them fools that was in there, playing and pretending. Them Sadducees and Pharisees and angels of lights and scribes and everybody who had limited understanding. He went in there. Jesus entered the synagogue 
on the Sabbath, and he began to teach. What did Jesus begin to do when he went into the, the synagogue? Teach. What was Jesus? Uh, a what? A teacher. Jesus was involved in a what kind of ministry? Teaching. And the only way that you can be taught is to listen. Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. Jesus' ministry was a ministry of teaching. Number one. The people were astonished at his teaching. Because he taught as one who had authority. He didn't teach like they were accustomed to hearing teaching being done. He didn't teach traditional ways and talk to them traditionally and rap back and hoop and holler and the keyboard get the glasses and the keyboard get the door and they used to run across the church and running around the church. You trying to figure out what's wrong with that fool. Oh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Watch this. Watch this. The people were astonished at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the scribes. Mm -hmm. Not as the other ones who were teaching. He taught better than them. Watch this. Suddenly, a man with an unclean spirit cried out right in the middle of the service. Oh, Him. He didn't just yell, 
shut up, be silent, come out of him. The spirit came out of him. Yes. Because the spirit recognized who he was. Mm -hmm. Who was in him. Mm -hmm. Watch this, watch this, watch this. And the news about Jesus spread quickly throughout the whole region of Galilee. Be silent is translated again, shut up. The four words are translated, come out of him, release him, leave him, free him. To show us any combination of those words will work. And it don't take no more than that. You ain't got to lay down all night to deliver somebody. Because mm -hmm. it ain't you knowing. It's the power that's flowing through you. And if it's really Jesus, the devil going to recognize and going to obey. If it's really God, they're going to obey. Watch this. Watch this now. I'm going to show you the same thing again. Matthew 4, 23. Jesus went throughout Galilee. Now he's just left, right? The word's going out into Galilee. Now Jesus is in Galilee. Now we're picking up with Matthew. Matthew says, Jesus went throughout Galilee, continuing his teaching in the synagogue. Because he got the people's attention now. He, could, he continued preaching. The gospel of the kingdom. Now listen to, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this, folks. He came here. And Jesus continued healing every disease and sickness amongst the people. Wait a minute now. You mean to tell me that Jesus is teaching? He's delivering? And he's healing people? And there's no healing taking place in the churches now? There's no deliverance taking place in the churches now. You just talking about mumbo jumbo bubblegum sugar pop, huh? Jesus was healing, teaching, and delivering. Watch this: healing every disease and sickness amongst the people. News about him continued to spread beyond Galilee into Syria, and people bought unto Jesus all who had various diseases. We don't want folks sitting beside us if they ain't walking straight. Amen. Amen. If they come in with a limp and they come in walking twisted and sideways, we, we start making room and, and getting out of their way. Amen. They was bringing sick people with maladies and all types of deformities and they was wheeling them in on carts and dragging them in on carts because they was paralyzed and the word saying, Jesus, heal, heal them all. Heal them all. People running around here sick Sitting up under their bishop. Sitting up under their teacher. You sick by choice. You ain't sick because the power of God ain't flowing. It's because you ain't operating yeah. in the power right. that's been released. Did you hear that? And I don't care where you are and who's teaching you. Watch this. Jesus healed all diseases. Those suffering from, listen to this, acute pain. Acute pain ain't a pretty pain. I want you, I want you to get it. Acute pain is pain that is persistent. It is pain that is always there. It's a nagging pain. Mm -hmm. Now you call your wife an acute pain or you call your husband an acute pain. It ain't talking about acute pain. We're talking about pain that is constantly getting your attention because it's constantly there. Jesus healed people of acute pain. So you got no reason to remain in pain unless you're not hearing. What the Spirit of the Lord has to say Amen. unto the church. Amen. Watch this. He was healing the demon possessed. Yes, there are people that are demon possessed. That's right. Yeah. In church. And if you ain't in church today and you're at home, you might be at home with your demon. Yes, I said it. Did you hear that? Because I ain't worried about you. You ain't got no heaven or no hell to put me in. I got to give an account to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his name ain't John B. Chambers Jr. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief. <laughs> Just because that's my best friend, that don't mean he know it all. You sure? He know what I let him know. <laughs> Wait a minute now. That's just like God. We don't know it all. We know what he let us know. That's right. That's right. Because some things ain't for us to know. Not yet. Because we ain't ready for him yet. We got to get ready for him. And he's trying to get us ready. Did you hear that? You don't know it all. I don't know it all. But I know what I know. Come on. Watch this. Those who 
who were having seizures and the paralyzed, Jesus healed them all. Amen. The condition that you're in, you don't have to remain in that condition. Did you hear that? Amen. But you got to do something. You can't just be a hearer of the word. Talk to me, y'all. Y'all with me. You got to be a doer. Yeah, yeah. And that's our problem. What we are doing. That's right. What we are doing that is not what God has sanctioned for us to do. Yeah. Who we listen to that God has not released for us to listen to. Everybody ain't for you to listen to. Even though you can listen to everybody. Amen. But everybody ain't for us to listen to. That's right. Watch this. Watch this. The devil trying to keep us blind, trying to keep our ears stopped up. He knows that we need to listen to God. He knows that when we get comfortable listening to what God has to say, we don't pay him no attention. See, we like to give the devil a lot more glory, authority, and power over our lives than he really has. No. Simply because we're not listening. Did you hear that? Yeah. Hmm? God cares enough about us that he doesn't want us to continue to walk in sin. Mm -hmm. So he said, hear me, do my word, be obedient, take heed. Don't you understand? Don't you know? If you knew how to be healed, wouldn't you be healed? Amen. Stop talking about it. You know how to be healed. Why ain't you healed? Because you're not doing what's necessary to be healed. You got to take stock and you got to look at your life. What are the unresolved sins? What are the secret sins? What are the family nine curses upon your life? You don't have to remain in the condition that you're in yes. if Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. The reason that people are in the condition that they're in, and love, some of them like to use this excuse, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Ignorance is no excuse. Listen, if you woke up this morning, you can say, Lord, I'm sorry. Amen. If you woke up this morning, you can say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, set a guard at the gates of my lips so that I don't sin against you. You have the authority to command your death. You have the authority to say, Lord, listen, if I sin against you in any way, in any course throughout the day, Lord, please cover it in the blood. Lord, I'm so sorry. Lord, if there's any hatred in my heart, if there's anything in me, Lord, if there's anything trying to talk to 15 people in, the, in, in one day instead of just trying to talk to four. Mm -hmm. Me trying to be all things to all people. The Lord told me in, in private conversation with me, hey, okay, you, you're stepping into my areas now. Probably you. you. You stepping into my areas now. Well, You're not me. You're not going to do things like me. So stop pretending like you me. You have a certain level of authority. Yes. You have a certain level of understanding. Don't go beyond that. Because when you go beyond it, you start walking in pride. Amen. Start thinking more highly of yourself than you are. I ain't laid my hands on nobody and they recovered. I have laid my hands on somebody and the Lord recovered them. Right. I will never forget this. I was at Pick and Pay Shoes. I don't know if y'all remember Pick and Pay. You yeah. used to go in there and pick them up and pay for them. <laughs> pick them up. And you pay them. You can try them on. I saw people sticking them in their pocketbooks. I, you know, that wasn't my concern back then. I used to work at Pick and Pay Shoes. This man came in. This is right when I first started in ministry. Oh, oh, I thought I was a man. Kept a bottle of oil with me. You know, you, you, you really know you're fresh when you walk around with your bottle of nothing on you. I said, hold on. We started talking. He said, you know what? 
My feet hurt me so bad. I don't believe I'm going to be able to try these shoes on. He said, do you know anybody that pray for my feet? And I was like, what? Well, that's a strange request. But you know one thing? I'm a minister. How about I pray for your feet? He said, I don't let everybody touch my feet. I look at them things and I said, oh, I see why. <laughs> you don't let everybody touch your feet. He had a toe. He had a toe that was wrestling. His big toe was wrestling with his little toe. <laughs> and it went all the way over there. And his big toe was choking his little toe. And on the end of it, it looked like it had lips on the side. On the side, it looked like it had lips. And he had toenails that looked like claws. Oh, whatever. I'm telling you the honest to God's truth. I'm telling you the truth. He had some feet that were jacked up, looked like they'd been in a car accident. I got my oil. Didn't pay no attention to his feet. I said, can you put your sock on? And they put your sock on. He put his sock on. Put the oil on my hand. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was operating on faith. I was operating under the unction that this man needed somebody to pray for his feet. I rubbed my hands together. My hands got really, really warm. I said, well, is this some kind of warming oil? I looked at the bottle and said, no. You know what oil? I rubbed my hands. My hand got hot. I put my hands on his feet. Now, he had his feet down there. I put my hands on his feet. I said, Lord, heal my brother's feet. Lord, whatever is in my brother's feet that is out of order, realign it. Reconstruct his feet. Lord, make him able to walk again free from pain. Make him able, Lord, to know that this is you that's doing this and you alone. And I said, amen. I didn't know what I was doing. Had no idea. And I waited for a minute. I said, how your feet feel? He said, hold on for a second. They're a little warm. Mm -hmm. This was this was 20 years. I've been in ministry 24 years. This was 20 years ago. Well, 24 years ago. Because you know, this is right when I first started. I said, well, how do you feet feel now? He, he was like, don't rest. I'm going to try to stand up here. I said, you walked in here. You're going to have to walk out of here. <laughs> they didn't carry him in. He walked in. But he walked in limping. Mm -hmm. He walked in. His feet was hurting. He was like he was on the heels of his feet. He put his feet down. He said, he said man, that feels pretty good right there. I feel pretty good. I hadn't been able to do this in years. I said, you hadn't been able to stand up. He's like, no, I hadn't been able to lean forward. Wow. He had calluses on the back of his, because he'd been walking on his heels. I said, now what are you going to do to that? He said, I quote, I came to buy a pair of shoes. I'm going to leave here with a pair of shoes. I said, you're going to do more than that. You're going to walk out of here with the shoes on your feet. Long story short, the man put the shoes on. We got him a size big. Because I told you, his feet were still jacked up. They still looked like they looked. <laughs> the, the healing had just begun. Mm. But it hadn't been completed yet. Yeah. Got him a size, a pair of shoes, one size bigger than the size that he wore. But guess what he did when he left the store? He walked out with, the shoes. with the shoes on his feet. Amen. Giving God the glory. Amen. Now, that's the story that I can tell. But I had no idea that that's what was taking place in me then. The Lord was revealing to me that it ain't me. I ain't do nothing to that man's feet. Mm -hmm. Except be obedient to the spirit of the Lord when he said, pray for this man's feet. Mm -hmm. I heard him. Did you get me? Mm -hmm. I heard him. Mm -hmm. Because I was paying attention to what was going on around me. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. Watch this. Sometimes we ignore what we hear. Wife talking to you, you put her on mute. Men got a natural remote. We got a built-in remote. You know what it's called? It's called the walk away. <laughs> they start talking, we start walking away. <laughs> now, if you want to really get the bumblebees and the hornets nest stirred up, walk away with your woman talking to you. <coughs> it's like putting gasoline on a fire. It's like taking your finger and sticking your finger in the hornet's nest. Yeah. You know what's getting ready to happen. You already know you're going to get stung multiple times. <laughs> you ain't just going to get stung. You're going to get stung until you tap out. Or you get all the way out of the, 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 the reach of the stinger. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. We ignore what we hear a lot of times because we just 
don't want to hear. Hebrews says, and this is a good word to remember, today. Say it with me. Today. 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 If you hear my voice, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. See, you go to church on Sunday to hear the voice of the Lord and you leave waiting. Well, when was the Lord going to speak? I went to church today anticipating hearing the voice of the Lord and all I could hear was my preacher yelling. Well, then you wasn't paying attention. Watch this. Let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. The Bible says hear. The Bible says listen. The Bible says obey. The Bible says do this, do that. Don't do that. Don't do this. Be here. Don't be there. Don't go there. Don't, don't, don't. Do, do, do. But the Bible is in perfect harmony and perfect balance. Mm -hmm. And because we're out of balance, we don't like it when the Bible tries to bring us in balance. Yeah. By doing the things that cause us to be out of balance. And it starts by listening. If you are blessed with the ability to hear Hear this. God Almighty. Watch this. I've heard people say ignorant things in church. Right after God has got through moving. Come on now. You're getting ready to leave and you done did your benediction and you're fellowshipping and you're having a good time and you're over here conversation. Now, I've been in ministry 24 years, so I'm not here because if I, if I was to hear it here, I'd interrupt it and call it. But I've been in ministry long enough that I can tell you that people say some stupid things when services are over. What are you talking about, Bishop? I'm going to tell you. Well, the service today sure was powerful. I wish so-and-so could have been here today to hear that. <laughs> Lord, they sure needed to hear that. I just wish that they'd have been here. First off, you're wrong for wishing. <laughs> First off, wishing is likened into witchcraft. Wishing. You wishing. I, I wish he would. I wish he were here. <laughs> I, I wish I, I, I wish I, I wish I, I wish a one would. I wish you would. I wish you would. Y'all know the rest. I wish I wish a one would. I wish I wish one would. Y'all wishing. Y'all wishing. You wishing. Okay? Yeah, all y'all making wishes. Wishing is what people with magic lamps do. Wishing is what people do that, that believe in genies. Horoscopes. You know, wishing. I wish it. Yeah, I wish. I, I sure wish so and so was here. All your wishing didn't wish him here, did it? <laughs> so you just blew one of your three wishes. I'm <laughs> messing with you. Watch this. Oh, watch, watch this. Watch this. Ooh, Bishop Joe was getting on the sinners today. Oh, 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 oh. I wonder. I wonder who that word was for. I wonder who was Bishop talking to. I wonder who that word was for. Just the Lord has moved graciously, miraculously, and then they spoil it by going out there because they ain't heard nothing yet. Mm. Newsflash! When God is giving me a sermon to preach, he's not giving it to me to preach to those he knows not going to be here. Amen. He's giving it to me to preach to the one that are going to be here. Huh? He's giving me the message for those that have committed themselves to pushing their way through. Mm -hmm. Those who have said, nothing's going to stop me from going into the house of God. I'm going to help somebody. You watched football yesterday? All oh, y'all that's at home looking at me now, stadium was full of folk. Church is still empty. Mm -hmm. You go to Chili's, you go to Outback, you go to KNW, Canes and Walkers. You go to Golden Corral, full of people. Church is still in. Right. Huh? Help me, somebody. Amen. Elon College played football yesterday, rode by the stadium. You just couldn't get there. Stadium's packed. Everybody going to be watching professional football today, basketball. Stadiums and arenas packed. Church is still naked and empty. Amen. Skeletal remains left. Yeah. Only the committed, That's right. only those who fight their way through, only those who have made a stance to say nothing's going to stop me from going, go. And they don't necessarily go because they want to be there. They go because they're obligated to God to be there because they know he's going to do something. 
They have enough faith and hope that he's going to release something. It might be at the beginning of the service. If you're late, you miss it. It might be in the middle of the service. If you sleep, you miss it. It might be at the end of the service when you went for your bathroom break and you miss it. But it's not because it wasn't that. Watch this, watch this, watch this. People fighting through adversity and demonic spirits and everything, every course of hell and life trying to stop them from getting their traffic stops. Flat tires, deers running out from the cars, cars running out of gas. Everything that could happen, would happen to stop them from getting to church on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Watch this. They got here. They wanted to get the word hot, fresh. They wanted to get the rolls with butter on them. Y'all know when they put that food out of here, they had it wet. <laughs> nice and hot and fresh and steaming. Yeah. That's how they wanted their word. They get here three, four, four quarters through the service. All they can leave with is a doggy bag or to go bag. Now you got to try to do a summary to catch them up. Same thing that was in the main meal is in the crumbs. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Same thing that's in the meal that they're getting to go <laughs> is in the crumbs. Well, well. They just might not get it hot. They might have to try to reheat it. They might have to try to stick it in the microwave. They might have to try to do something to figure out why come I can't get what they got. Ah, you didn't commit yourself like they committed themselves. Here we go. Chew on this for a little while. Can you eat when you sleep? <laughs> you can't be taught when you sleep either. <laughs> you can't be delivered when you sleep either. I'm talking about when deliverance is happening. I'm not talking about when the Lord is doing things at night while you sleep. I'm talking about when deliverance is in the midst. When Jesus was in the midst and they were bringing people to the midst of Jesus, those people had to be awake to receive whatever it was that Jesus was having for them. None of those people were asleep. They were paralyzed. They were filled with demons. They were filled with spirits. They had acute pains. They had different maladies. They had all manner of sickness and diseases. But guess what they were? They were awake. Waiting for the Lord to give them what they need. Did you hear that? As I close, I want to remind you of this wonderful story that is taking place in the Bible. In 1 Samuel. Samuel was a young boy. He was given over to the temple to be raised as a priest. And Eli was his mentor. Eli began to be the father figure in his life. And it goes on to say that one night, while Samuel was sleeping, he heard somebody saying, I want y'all to get this. John, John. jumped up out of bed. He went to Eli. He says, yes, yes, master, because he was his mentor. He was his trainer. Did you call me? He says, no. Wasn't me. He go back and lay down. He goes back and lays down. Second time. John? John. Samuel jumps up Runs back to Eli. He says, yes, what is it? Did you call me? He says, no, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down. Somebody, y'all ain't, ain't got it yet. Preparation being made. He was preparing his hearing. He was unstopping his ears. He was getting his attention. Come on now. He was making him ready to receive the third and final time. got up and he went back and said yes. Now something happens in Eli. Yeah. Eli perceives that the spirit of the Lord is moving upon Sam. You got to perceive that the spirit of the Lord is moving in your life. Even after the third time of going back. And he says listen this time Samuel when you go back and you hear that voice, which means it was going to be a fourth time. Mm -hmm. He says, you say, yes, Lord. Here's your servant. It's listening. Mm -hmm. Go lie down. And when you 
you speak, you say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. I guess you know what happened when Samuel went back and he heard the voice. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your servant is ain't here to do nothing but listen. He that has an ear, let him hear this. All you got to do sometimes is shut up. Samuel heard the voice, and Samuel was obedient and says, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And the Bible goes on to say that Samuel and the Lord began to have a conversation. And in the conversation that the, the relationship was being built with Samuel and God, he was telling him of all of the things that he was going to do for him simply because he paid attention to his voice. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19, we're reminded by Paul, it says, do not quench the spirit. Sometimes the Lord is speaking and we're trying to shut him up. We want to shut the Lord up when he starts speaking. That's enough of that now. It don't take all of that. It takes that and more for some of these wretched, backwoods, ignorant, world stuck idiots that's running around here playing church. It takes that and more for some of them. I ought to go to church from 10 o'clock to 10 o'clock at night, some of them. <laughs> Hell yes. Uh -huh. Quenching the spirit is what happens when we don't listen to the spirit. When we decide that we're going to do it our way and refuse to hear the spirit, we quench the spirit following our own worldly desires. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Ephesians reminds us do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all your bitterness. Uh -huh. Get rid of all your rage. Get rid of all your inward, private, hidden, deep-seated anger. Because you got anger issues. You can't control yourself. You got to grab and punch and shake and kick and point guns. Get rid of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All of your brawling. And your slander, all your malice, in every form of malice. Learn how to be kind. Learn how to be compassionate to one another. Learn how to be forgiving as Christ God forgave you. We don't want to forgive people. We don't listen. How are you right pushing 60? You about to you about to roll over top of 60. And you still harboring unforgiveness for something somebody did to you in high school. You was married to a man 15, 20 years ago that hurt you deeply. And you still carry that burden. You ain't let that joker go. Amen. That joker still got that much power on you. He did that much damage. Well, then juice, you, you out there just like cuz was. Mm -hmm. Something wrong with your mind. <laughs> if he got that kind of power over you, you out there with the other animals out there. There's something wrong with their mind. 15, 20 years ago, here it is, 2021, you was married to this joker, 2003, 2004, and you still got, you still talk about that joker? Huh? All right. Talking about, talking about trying to help somebody. Did you hear that? All these women running around here being towed down from the floor down with these fools. All these men running around here playing these games with these women. Juggling women like you juggle balls. And then wondering why people are so damaged and why they're so hurt. Did you hear that? Let it go. God says he's going to remove those who don't participate in the plan of salvation. He's going to remove them. He's going to punish them. Those that don't listen to his voice are going to suffer his judgment and his wrath. God desires that no man should perish. But when a man refuses to hear God, when a man or a woman makes a conscious choice to lie on God, yeah. the only thing that awaits 
It's punishment and judgment. Did you hear that? That's right. In his word, as I said, I'm closing. God has delivered on everything that he has said. Every promise that he has made, he's delivered on. God has kept his word to the teeth. He has never lied. Amen. He has never not had the ability to do what he said that he was going to do. God has given us the opportunity to walk in divine grace so that we can share that grace with others. So that people can see that it is possible to come out of whatever it was that you were in and God made a difference in your life. There are pastors who spent more time in jail than they spent in the pulpit. There are pastors who spent more time in the streets than they spent reading the word of God. But they're powerful men for the kingdom. Because the Lord said he takes the foolish things to confound the wise. That's what they were. That's what they were. That's not who they are now. Our problem is as believers is that we don't hear God when he say that. And we want to we wanna try to look at them and remember them as who they were. But we never want to see them as who they are. Because we don't hear God. Isaiah 4 and 20 says, You have seen many things, church, but you pay no attention. Your ears are open, but you do not listen. Yeah. All right. You've seen many things. You've seen God's promises. You've seen God heal. You've seen God deliver. You saw God create a miracle this morning by giving you life. Yes. But are you hearing what he's saying to you today? Because his word says you've seen many things, but you still don't pay attention to everything that you've seen. you got ears that are open. Because your ears are open, but you still don't hear. Well. You have the ability and the capacity to hear, but when you hear, something should happen in your hearing. After hearing becomes doing. Hearing is not enough. You got to hear and obey. Obey is doing. Do is in obey. Doing something. You see it, God says in Isaiah 4 and 20, but you don't pay attention. You hear it, but you don't listen. That's powerful. Jeremiah 7 and 13 says, while you were doing all the things that you wanted to do in the eyesight of the Lord, I spoke to you again and again and again and again and again and again, but you did not listen. I called you again and again and again. But you did not answer. Now for those of you who think I'm making this up, you turn to Jeremiah 7 and 13 and you see, don't the Lord call you and try to get your attention and call you multiple times and you not listen because you don't hear it. Did you hear that? Something got you so distracted that you can't hear him calling you. So as we prepare to leave this place but not from the presence of God, I remind you in every household that you represent, be careful. Be watchful. Be cautious that you are not rejecting God's voice on purpose. If you're not listening to God, please let it be on accident. Don't let it be on purpose. Don't let it be because you don't like what he's saying. Don't let it be because you don't like him revealing the truth. What individual wants to hear the truth? When the truth comes to set you free. When you've been conditioned to believe a lie. You're more comfortable in that state. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. Who you're listening to might be your problem. Who you're not listening to might be a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. If you're not listening to God, you have to question and you have to ask yourself, who 
Are you listening to? Did you hear that? Say we were closing and that's what I meant. If so, I got a question for you. When was the last time you heard God's voice? This morning. You had right to, now. You had to hear it this I morning. I hear it right now. You had to hear it this morning. I, I know you're hearing it now. Because I know he's speaking through me. Mm -hmm. But you had to hear his voice this morning. Because mm -hmm. you know what he said? He didn't say, get up! Get up! <laughs> I need you! He said, he, he might even know somebody and say, okay, time to get up. Mm -hmm. Time to get up. Did you tell him, speak, Lord? Your servant is listening. Or did you just get up? Just got up. Be honest with you. Didn't just got up. Him. Didn't even thank him. So did Didn't even tell him. Well, speak, Lord. I did thank you, God. Your servant is listening. I did say thank you. We got work to do. There's still hope for us because we are still living. God is still speaking, church. He's still speaking. He's still showing forth his miraculous abilities and power. But the question remains, are you listening? Did you hear that? He that hath an ear, let him hear this. Amen. Amen. I give to you what the Lord has released for me to give to you today, and I will simply be obedient. My prayer for the body of Christ, for all of you who are watching by stream, welcome, welcome, welcome. My prayer for the body of Christ will be a simple one. Right where you are, I will touch and agree with you for the things that you have before God on your behalf. I'll stand in the gap with you and be one of the two or three that are gathered together in his name that he's in the midst of them so that you can receive access to the authority that you claim that you have. Lord, fix whatever it is that needs to be fixed in my brothers and my sisters and even in me. Reveal, Lord, yourself in a way that is fresh and new as far as our circumstances are concerned. Lord, reach down from your throne in grace. Allow the grace and the majesty and the divinity of your power to fill us. Fill every area that's empty in us. Well, well. Remove those areas of us that are stagnant or stale or even rotting away. Yes, Spiritual surgery on us to cut out and cut away from us everything that is hindering us from hearing you. Lord, unstop our ears. Yes, Lord. Remove the scale from our eyes. Mm -hmm. Father God, teach us how to balance our lives with the distractions that the world offers. Father, be with us and guide us and walk with us and allow us the opportunity to continue to bask in your glory as we go forth on our kingdom assignment. Lord, we give your name glory. Lord, we give your name honor. And we give your name praise. And I decree and declare for everyone under the sound of my voice, Father God, that from this day forward, when you speak, we will learn to say, speak the glory for your servant. Is this <clears throat> speak? Thank you, God. Lord, for your servant is this. Thank you, God. For all you who are under the sound of my voice who are claiming to be servants, this should begin to be your mandate to remind yourself of who God is to you because I know who He is to me. Amen. Amen. I know Him as a healer, and the only way that you can know Him as a healer is if He heals. I know him as a deliverer, and the only way that you can know him as a deliverer is if he delivers. Jesus was in the teaching ministry, the healing ministry, the deliverance ministry. If you need to be taught, you need to avail yourself to teach him. If you need to be healed, you need to start speaking healing on your own life with the authority that you have and walk in it. Doesn't mean that you don't you stop going to your cancer treatment. Doesn't mean that you stop taking your insulin. It just means that until such a time as your body is re-regulated till you don't need it and the doctor tells you you don't need it, you do what's necessary. 
to receive your healing. Hallelujah. Walk in your deliverance. Walk in the authority and the power that Jesus Christ has released upon you. And know that God is in the blessing business. Say it with me before we go. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Lord. The servant is listening. The servant is listening. And they all said amen. And they all amen. 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 I've given to you, church, what the Spirit of the Lord has released for me to give to you. Now we're going to the portion of service where we bless God and worship God without giving. We'll get our announcements and we'll be dismissed from this place until we meet again. Amen.